Hello, welcome back. I'm Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen, and how are you doing today? That's bad. So, what do you do with your hair? Let's take a poll. How many people cut their hair at home, and how many people go in to have their hair cut? And then the second part of the poll is, how much do you pay for a typical haircut? So I've been cutting my hair off and on throughout the years, like even back in high school and stuff like that. And I, you know, I'm sure you've noticed my hair's a little longer. It's actually grown a little bit more than it has for a few years now. Um, and my bangs are getting longer. So I have to decide what do I do with it. Now, one thing I have noticed, which is probably really hard for you to see, is I don't have any split ends. Maybe you wonder if you hear there. But like as a child, like even growing up into adulthood, all that stuff, I always had split ends. Like always had split ends, right? And I've noticed this last year, I don't have a lot of split ends anymore. My hair's probably the healthiest it's ever been, which is super crazy. But yet on the other hand, um, I do understand some of it. <laughs> Not all of it. <laughs> I can't even say it's genetics because, like I said, I've had split ends over the years for a long time. So, hmm, yeah. But I'm just debating if I want to just go in and spend the money and get it cut for once. I don't think it's been cut from a salon, like, at a place, like somebody else cutting my hair. Hmm. Oh, it's way before COVID, you guys. Way before 2020. I can't even tell you when. Mm, geez, yeah. I know who cut it. I just don't remember when. It's been such a long time. So I was just thinking like, maybe I should just go get it cut, you know, so they can fix the bangs and fix the rest of it, you know, and get it all nice and even and where it's supposed to be. Um, I do that to my son every once in a while. I'll be like, I just can't, I can't cut your hair. You got to go in and do it. And that's usually once every six months, unless I really screw it up. And then it's like, maybe you should just go in and get it cut, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. I kind of, I've kind of been thinking like, it'd be nice to grow it out, you know, and stuff like that. See if I can grow it out longer than it's ever been. You know, that'd be fun. But I hate taking care of it. I mean, I don't really do anything with it. You know, it's the Let's put it in a point hill to clean and, you know, leave it down. Or sometimes it drives me nuts and I just clip it up. But, um, and then when it's short, then I'm like, oh, I wish it was long. It's so stupid, right? <laughs> men, most men have it easy, you know. My boys even have it easy. It's so sick. They wet it down. Like, my, my oldest son, he just wets his down. And then he does this thing, you know. And then he just fluffs it up, and then he goes like this, and then he, and then he just, and then it's funny because he kind of shapes his curls a little bit, you know, so they, you know, <laughs> it's sick. <laughs> and then my, 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 my middle son has to work for it a little more though. He's, he's got to work those curls a little bit more. If he left his hair alone, it'd be wavy, um, and poofy, a little more poofy because they have such thick hair. My youngest son has my hair, which has little to no wave. Okay, so I'm kind of lying here. Like, my hair has more wave now, more volume now than it ever did. Crazy, isn't it? But my youngest son has my hair, and so he has a little bit of, a little bit of something, but pretty much like a straight shot down, you know. It doesn't go anywhere. So we have to kind of give him some more more layers than the other two get, but yeah, I'm probably saving myself a boatload of money by cutting their hair, and um, yeah, I should just stick that into savings, right, every time I cut their hair, because I cut my son's, my oldest, like every two weeks, I swear, it grows so fast, <sighs> yeah, I should put it in a jar, okay, I cut your hair, there's 20 bucks, <laughs> cut your hair, <laughs> she think it's 25, depending on where he goes, but yeah, it's ridiculous, I understand they're on their feet all day and they need to make a living too, so. But 
I guess it's that money priority, right? It's not a big priority for me to go get my hair cut at the salon than it is to spend that money somewhere else. So, yeah. Oh, quite a lot of chit chat. Okay, what are we doing? Oh, uh, we're doing a soap again. I'm sorry. We're going to do a lot of soaps, a lot of things, but there's a lot of fun things coming up too. So, hang tight, hang tight. Don't unsubscribe yet. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a subscriber, subscribe because we have fun stuff coming up. But this one, okay, so it was a thought process, and I haven't done a second one to go with it just because I haven't had time. But um, because <laughs> I'm still thinking this process through. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to know if you could do a mica drop swirl. As in, could you push those micas down exactly where you wanted them to go with more soap batter? <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we haven't done, I haven't done the Christmas soaps yet. So the mica lines, yeah, this is coming out a little bit before the whatever, whatever. You'll see what I mean. I'll kind of explain it more in the video, I hope. And three things. Dream big. Be true to you. You are worth it. And do you cut your hair? And what do you pay for it? I really want to know. So tell me in the chat. Okay, it's not a chat. Tell me in the comments. But let's go check out this video on what I call a mica line drop swirl. Okay. So sometimes I think of things when I'm sleeping. And this was one of those things. Like how come I couldn't push a mica line down using a drop swirl. Now, I've only done this once and I need to do some more retesting, but I thought I'd share it with you just because it was kind of fun. Um, to begin with, let's see. My fragrance oil is Thunderstorm by Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, it's kind of different. It's, I'm not sure really. I'll show you the notes at the end. Um, but it wasn't supposed to discolor. Maybe it was supposed to discolor. Oh, yeah. It discolors to pink. That's right. It discolors to pink. So, I actually left a lot of this uh, plain because I really wanted to see it discolor to pink. So, half of the batter is plain. And then we did... Did I do any colors? Titanium dioxide. Yes. Okay. I'm like, uh, where are my notes? Okay, yeah, half half a half a batch half the batch was titanium dioxide. Half of it was um, the batter and then bowl swirl. There you go. <laughs> I'll get my I'll get my crap together here. <laughs> Basically, I just wanted the little bit of discoloration if it would even come through. I wanted it to turn pink. Um, I wanted um, to push my mica lines down. And get some um, different, different um, designs. You know what I'm saying? But, but, like I said, I haven't tested this again. Here's my thought process with this. I think I need a thicker mica line, number one. Number two, mm, maybe a thicker soap. A thicker batter. Because I'll... I'll I'll explain my my thoughts on that just because, it, you know, if it's too thin, if it's thicker, maybe it'll hold to the mica and, and hold it as it pushes it down, right? Because, see, it's, it's a very thin, very thin. And so what I was trying to do was to try and knock all that mica out of the way, okay? Like I said, I have a lot of notes and lots of ideas for the second one which is not in the making right now, let me tell you. <laughs> Too much of this stuff on the brain. Um, but can you see where a thicker mica line and a thicker batter would have made this a little bit better? Um, I have this thought with this sweet chili um, soap that I want to do for the new year. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. Either that or make it just black oxide, black activated charcoal, one of those two, and push the pretty colors all the way. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm still debating on that one. But 
it was a good thought. It this definitely was a good thought in in retrospect. In retrospect, <laughs> it you know you'll have to see if it worked or not. Um, but I'm sure by the little what do they call it thumbnails whatever the little you know picture yeah you've seen what it looks like. Um, so just so you know, it was Queen's Purple by uh, Brambleberry. It was Klein Blue from Nurture Soap. And this top one is um, Snowflake Sparkle from Brambleberry. Yep, those are the three Michael lines. But like I said, I think they need to be thicker. I think they need to be thicker. And I think the soap batter needs to be thicker to get a really good um, drop swirl swirl with the Michael line um, doing its thing. But, yeah. That was my thought in the middle of the night. One fine day. No. <laughs> and then I think I put, is this hollow glitter? I think I put snowflake sparkle and some hollow glitter. Oh, I, that's right. I put, oh yeah. as messing. Oh, it's so fun to play with the top of the soap, you guys. Even though it doesn't ever stay, you know, it's not like you get, it's not like a quilt where, you know, you get the big, <laughs> put all the little pieces together and you get the big design. <laughs> Soaping's like you got the design and <laughs> you cut them into little pieces. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I was having fun. It was like I said, I wasn't exactly even sure if it was even going to work. I wasn't even sure if I was going to, when, wasn't going to end up with a mess of mica inside my soap. Just like all splattergoried in there. But, um, don't ask me what the top is. It's like a basket weave. It, it turned out really cute. Kind of cool. Different. Different. Yeah, I needed a little more swirl. A little more swirl to that. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's the top. Yeah. Here's the next day. Definitely pink discoloration. Definitely a hint of pink. I thought that was funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you get a when you get a soap that discolors to like something crazy like purple or pink or you know, you just kind of want to go with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. There's something wonky with my soaps lately. It's not my soaps. It's my soap cutter. Yeah. That's the drawback to having um, this type of soap cutter. Where it just doesn't cut them all at once. But but look at this soap. Look at this soap. It kind of worked. It literally actually kind of worked. But do you see where a thicker line might have been a better idea? And a thicker batter? You know, just more definition? Definitely, definitely kind of cool. Yeah. These, 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 these are, the pink kills me. The pink absolutely just, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like, is it going to come all the way through? Will we see some definition with the titanium dioxide? It's, it's, it's so suspenseful. It's like, but they turned out cute. But, you know, so in theory, this did work. It's just... You know, there's always room for improvement with soap making. You know, especially when you have an idea in the middle of the night on a nice fine day to <laughs> do a soap. <laughs> uh, but anyway, here is the set description for this bar or these bars. Here it is right after it's cut. And amazingly, this is what it is four weeks later. Not a lot of discoloration to the metal, but what the heck? I hope you had a good time. Thank you for stopping by. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.